Hey again, everyone. Thank you for joining me. You know, I thought with uh, with most people being home, therefore most content creators being home, there would be more videos out. And I've noticed that's not really the case. I'm not sure why, but I have not spoken with you in a while. And so I thought it'd be nice if I sat down with some of my notes and uh, had a chat with you. Um, if you will notice, there are some really spectacular photographs and pictures and I wanted to thank Annette Schneider for sending those to me and credit her with those. Very, very nice stuff. I really do appreciate you uh, letting, uh, letting me use those, Annette. Again, thank you. So uh, without further ado, uh, as the channel is, uh, consists mostly of discussion about narcissists, I have some notes that I, I keep. I, I haven't really made a video out of them. I have not made anything that's uh, scripted, so I'll, I'll kind of go through these and chat with you a little bit about each one as I go. Um, I heard something the other day on another channel that the narcissist must be completely beaten because they will never surrender, and that is absolutely true. If you can go no contact, go no contact, but oftentimes we are not. I've repeated this many times on my channel. You can't. And if you can't and you get ready to go in, you better get ready to go in full force all in because you're going to have to beat them completely because they simply won't surrender. Do not play fair with them. Pull all the stops out. Do whatever you can to win. And that way you can retrieve what is yours or replace what was yours or put things back as best you can after what they've destroyed. And uh, then you can go no contact. So with that being said, I have main advice is to go no contact. I want you to understand that before uh, you go in to start a war with a narcissist because they are very, very vindictive people, if we can call them people. They like to create feelings of chaos, fear, and powerlessness in you. If you were raised in an environment like that, you may not know anything any different. If you are raised in, in an environment like that, you probably are going to seek out those kinds of people in the future without even knowing it. It's simply unconscious. And when you finally figure out, when you finally figure out that the people around you are narcissistic and you can finally go no contact, that's when that clarity begins to come. And it doesn't stop either. This has been years and years since I've been affected in a really bad way. I'm pretty much no contact with the ones that I know and a very, very limited contact with only uh, one that I have to be. And even then, there's hardly any. But so you can, um, you, you are able to gain some clarity as you uh, get further and further away from. Them. Because remember, these are just ugly, ugly fucking people. Average on the outside, extremely ugly on the inside. And whatever you have ever done even, I mean, just the most remote mistake that you have ever made, they want to rub that in your face forever and ever, whatever it is. It could be the most minor thing. It could be things that are just, yeah, maybe you made a mistake, big deal, you know, but they're not like us. They, um, they like to use that ammunition um, later and over and over again. When I stopped tolerating the narcissist's behavior, that's when the discard came. Asking for one little thing from the narcissist will get your life turned upside down. That's how they keep control over you. There's no conscience. There's no kindness. There's simply no humanity. The narcissist loves to distort and twist the truth. One narcissist I've known, I would out and out say, hey, you're lying to me. And they would, with complete conviction, they would look at me and say they weren't lying. And they, I think they actually believe that, that twisting the truth or omitting important data somehow was not lying, but they were lying. They're exploitive. That is what they do. You're under constant attack. They attack your self-esteem, your reality, by gaslighting your friends, circle of friends, and smearing your name. If you've walked up on someone that you have never known before and they've known the narcissist, chances are they've been backstabbing you and shit-talking you to these people. I can't tell you how many times I rolled up on someone 
just to have them treat me really disrespectfully. And I did not know why. It's like, well, man, people just really don't like me. When I finally got rid of the narcissists around me, every single thing changed. All of it. It's, it's a night and day comparison. It's no wonder that we react so poorly to these people, and we don't even know why. Because when you're when you're busy trying to put out fires, you're trying to keep your equilibrium. You're you're giving it your best to appease this person who's constantly angry. They're these angry souls, is what they are. They're absolutely angry, and they never want you to see that anger. But they'll they'll make sure and victimize you in a, a hundred little ways. It's just, it's like the death of a thousand cuts. These, these people absolutely want you destroyed if they can't use you. They want to use you as far as they can, and when you start to wake up to them, then that is time for the, the ultimate discard, and uh, it can be very, very painful, but it's always worth it if you stick through. Their intention is to incite retaliation and use it against you as proof. So they will they will triangulate you with someone else, tell somebody, you know, horror stories about you, what a really bad gal or really bad guy you are, and and rally the troops around you when you haven't done anything. If you don't have to do anything for them to do this, they just do it. It's like it's it's second nature. They will uh, they'll rally these people around smear your name, triangulate to try to destroy you. This mainly happens when they can't use you anymore. If they're still using you, they'll, they'll revive the, the relationship a little bit at a time, trying to keep you still on their roster. But as you start to wake up, as I did, and you start to even ask for the smallest thing, you can watch the narcissistic rage start to seethe and it actually will come to the top. You see, the narcissist doesn't believe they have to do anything for anyone that basically they're entitled to whatever you have and whatever the world has. This is why they set those impossibly high standards for you, while, while they're simply lazy and deceptive. You know, if you were to ask them, when are you going to own up to what you did to me, they would turn that into an absolute inversion that they, they think that, that they were the victims. The extortion of trust. This is a big one. I've mentioned before, as well as other videos and, and uh, other channels, excuse me, and other videos, that you, the narcissist is unable to get to you unless they're close to you, whether it's family or marriage. I know, I know. Friends can do it, and so can kids and siblings, but generally the ones that can really attack you at the root are the people that you trust. And if you can't trust your spouse or if you can't trust your family, who can you trust? Well, definitely not these fuckers, right? <laughs> Big clown show. These narcs will look down their nose at you the entire time. And what's so funny is they have nothing to look down their nose at. That's why, you know, they know the truth. Somewhere I'm sure that they do know the truth. That's why they invert it. They know that you're better. They know that you're better than them. They know that you're more talented than them. And there's something that all of us victims have of the narcissist is we actually have a heart. These people just don't seem to even have a soul. I'm still going through my notes here. I'm trying not to make... Uh, you know, big stops in this, but I've got some uh, things that I can share with you and some that I'm unable to share at this point. Some, some of my notes are kind of jumbled, but um, anyway, like I said, it's not a scripted video, and I appreciate your patience with me. So uh, the less they tell the truth, the closer they are into turning into wood. Now, this is kind of a cool thing. I, 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 um, I can't remember exactly where I saw that. I try to credit people when I when I do find these things. It's like, what did I find that? Anyway, um, the less that they tell the truth, the closer they are into turning into wood, non-existent and dead. You know, they might look like human beings. They might kind of sort of act like human beings. They have the same features and whatnot. 
but they really aren't human. They have killed off that spirit inside them uh, quite willingly, too. I know, I hear, oh, well, the narcissist was victimized and something happened to them when they were broken. Well, you know what? Something happened to us, too. You know, something attempted to break us, too. Then why didn't we turn into narcissists? Why didn't we turn into non-human animals who were uh, vicious and petty like them? Well, we all have a choice, and I believe that the narcissist has a choice. So if they chose to follow the path of uh, destruction and darkness, that's their fault, not ours. It is our fault when we begin to wake up and we don't remove ourselves from the situation. Really, really a uh, hard thing to do. Not the easiest thing to do, I can tell you. So, now that we've talked about the narcissist and how awful they are, and we all know that, I want to revisit some of the things that have happened to me since I uh, have been able to go low or to no contact with, God, just a gaggle of these bastards. Just, it's just unbelievable. Um, you know, you do get clearer. You get clearer and clearer. And I don't have, personally, I just don't have any of those bad days anymore. If you have, and I know things are even tough right now, and I'm not going to talk about the, uh, oh, the virus. It's it's just, I don't know. There's, it, I don't have, my opinions are so varying each day. It wouldn't do any good to put my two cents worth on there. But the, um, uh, but my point is, or my point was, is that after you are, rebuilding the destroyed roads and buildings that they destroyed for you. They were planning those those improvised devices along the way and you didn't even know it. You thought that you were uh, you thought that you were with someone who was caring and kind that they were just a monster on the inside. They were just terrorists is what they were. And then once you finally get away from it you start to rebuild and it can take some time. Uh, I have not rebuilt what I uh, what I have lost, not even close. But I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that when I wake up in the morning, I don't have that same feeling anymore. And it was devastating. It was absolutely devastating, especially at the discard at the end. You're just left wondering, what what the hell, you know? How could someone that you were so close to, even if they decided that they didn't love or like you anymore, how can they do these things? And then I revisit some of these conversations and I look at these people and I look at the selfishness and the vacancy in their eyes. The, you know, if you remember that just vacant look. And I'm like, you're not dealing with a human being. That's how. They're not committed to you. They're not committed to you for one second. They're not committed. They don't care. They're not committed to anyone, again, except for their self. The root word of selfish, selfishness. They have no regard for you. They're a detriment to our society. They're a detriment to families. They're a detriment to children and spouses. Absolutely. And you thought that you could trust this person, but you can't. And we tried. We tried for a very, very long time. But they were, they were working their witchcraft behind your back the entire time. You know what, though? For those of us that have survived, there's, you know what? I'm going to kind of venture. I don't have any stats or data or anything, but I'm going to say that there are probably some people that simply didn't even survive. I know. I think that's really awful. That's not uh, something I hadn't even thought about until now. Some people probably didn't survive, you know, for one reason or other, whether, whether they turned to drugs or whether they drank themselves to death or whether they, um, whether they, uh, did the unthinkable of uh, taking their own life or whatnot. I'll bet there are many people that haven't made it to this point. But for those of us that have, I'll bet it's a real shock to them. Don't you know it? Don't you want to know that they, that they tried their best to destroy you? They tried their absolute best to get rid of you, to take your things, and when they couldn't take your things or they couldn't take your life, they would take you to court instead and then still lose. Don't you think that's a complete shock to them? At some point, the narcissist is going to have respect for you for that. I know, some of you think that they, no, I think there's a newfound respect. When, when I said, when you have to go all in and you have to 
absolutely that narcissist has to be beaten because they will not surrender. And when you're one of those that stands up and goes, look, fuck you. I'm not putting up with this. You're going down. And you know what? When you go all in, they don't expect that. They really don't. I'm not the only one that has said that you can't simply just go no contact. There's a couple on here, uh, a couple of doctors, as a matter of fact, after I've been saying it for a couple of years, I'm glad that they agree, or I, I agree with them. I almost said that they agree with me. I am not a doctor, as you know. I have a doctorate in knowing what a narcissist is, though. Uh, I should have an honorary degree for putting up with that shit, you know. At some point, at some level, they got to look at you and wonder, how in the hell did you make it? How in the world were you able to put up with that? And you did, and you found these channels, and you found the, the information, and you found other people that have been through it, and you survived through it. And it takes a whole lot of it takes a whole lot of something to get through that. You know they got to wonder, at some point. And they just move on to their next victim. But I'll bet you, I'll bet you they don't try to victimize you again. I don't know about you, but I think that's a great thing. That doesn't happen to me anymore. Doesn't happen the same way. And I also know when to stand up for, you know, I had an issue not too long ago having to stand up and tell someone like, hey, man, this is not acceptable. I am not putting up with this. After years and years and years of, of trying to deal with unreasonable people, unreasonable, toxic, entitled people who think that you owe them something just because they are standing in a place where they hadn't stood before. And that's all I can say about that without getting in too much trouble. But my, my point is, is that, yeah, sometimes you're going to have to fight back. When you do, you better do it, and you better do it to win. Shoot and shoot to kill. That's figurative. That doesn't mean go kill the narcissist. But when you, uh, when you go, when you, when you do, when you load up, man, shoot to kill. Make sure you're ready to go. And you will, too. I know. I did. I don't put up with it anymore. I absolutely won't put up with it anymore. Life is wonderful most days. I know a lot of us are inside right now. It is, uh, it's a little bit unnerving. It has been for me too. Uh, but, you know, what are you going to do? You know, it's like it's, it's happening to everyone. So it's, um, I think we can deal with this. I think we can deal with it. I know some of you are actually stuck with your narcissist, and that's, uh, that isn't a good place to be. That's why I wanted to put a little bit of something out here uh, tonight uh, so that you can have something. To, I know there's plenty to listen to, but I thought I'd you know, throw my two cents worth in as well. You can get past what the narcissist has done to you. And it is what they've done to you. They, it is not a he, sh he said, she said, or it was a two-way street or something. I guarantee you if you're visiting these channels, if you're visiting this topic, you are not. I'm not saying that you didn't do anything wrong. You probably did. I'm sure you did. I know I did. I know I reacted very poorly uh, in some times, but the reaction was just exactly what it is. Um, if you... If you continually push someone's buttons, eventually they're going to react. And so they should until they figure out what's going on. And then you don't have to react anymore. You can uh, go on about your business. I tell you, if I could leave you with anything on this, I'm going to leave you with the same thing I've said this before. Even if it was the last 10 minutes of your life and you were 100 years old and you figured out or you discovered what the narcissist was and what the narcissist has been doing to you, it is completely, completely worth it, 100%. It's worth all of your effort. That last bit of freedom is worth your effort. Not to bury our heads or, or can stick it out with someone who has treated us like this. Absolutely. And I wish you nothing but the best. I hope that I can be of some, uh, some service to you. I hope that what I've, my experience has been something that you can use. And I hope to talk to you all again real soon. Thank you, and thank you, Annette. You all have a good evening.